how's it going YouTube? In my normal life, um, I manage engineering departments, uh, project management, stuff like that. By trade, I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, I have been for years. One of the things that I use within my trade is thermal image cameras. Uh, one of the cameras I've been using for a, a long time is the FLIR, the FLIR uh, cameras, and they, as we all know, they can be quite pricey. Uh, what I like to look at is some of the alternatives to what we can get to those cameras and to see what sort of thing we can get. I've got a nice little pocket camera to look at today. This is a HIK Micro or HIK Micro E03. Nice little pocket camera, so it's nice and convenient to carry around for us. So what we'll do is we'll unbox this thing, where we'll have a look what you get in the box, we'll go through the functionality of it, and then I think what we'll do is we'll have a walk around and have a look at it in a practical situation, just to see how it performs. So let's get down on the bench and let's have a look at this thing close up, shall we? Right, here's the camera as it comes in the box. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put some links down in the description uh, for where you can find this on Amazon. There's currently now a promotion as well before Christmas. Uh, this is, they're having a 20% discount and there's a discount code in the description for a further 5% uh, on top of that. So if you want to check that out, you'll see where this is. Uh, but here it is as it comes in the box. Uh, Hick Micro E05. So what we'll do is we'll get this thing out of the box and let's have a look, see what you get inside it. Uh, first thing we notice on the inner box is we've got a little compartment here, instruction manual, a little thank you card uh, with some links to their websites showing you the rest of the range, what they do. And we've got a calibration certificate uh, valid from uh, a couple of months ago. Next thing we notice is a little pouch. This has got the camera itself in it. And right in the bottom of the box, we've got a little carrying strap there for the camera and a USB-A to USB-C charging cable. Uh, and that's all you get in the box. Right, so if we have a look at the unit itself, uh, you get a nice little convenient carrying pouch here with a good clip there for your belt. Uh, so it's nice and easy to store and carry uh, while you're at work. Open it up, we'll take the unit out Here's the unit itself. We'll just remove this protective cover. There we are. Now looking around the unit itself, it's not going to break easily if you drop it. It's quite a shock resistance case. Uh, it's nice and soft rubber, so it'll, it'll bounce a bit before it breaks. On the front, uh, we've got a 240 by 240 3.5 inch LCD touchscreen. It's got an inbuilt lithium battery, uh, chargeable by USB-C. Right, on the top, we've got the power button and we've got the camera button. If we flip it over upside down, uh, right there, we've got a little quarter inch threaded socket. So if, if you've got something else you want to mount it to, you can screw it on there and mount it in a fixed position uh, for whatever you're using it. We've got a little hole in the corner uh, for the strap. On the back, uh, we've got two cameras, one which is a normal camera and one which is the thermal image camera and a LED for a light source as well. Uh, this can be used as a dual camera system, so it's taking photos of the actual image plus the photo of the thermographic image as well. And that's it for the outside. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll set it up in front of the camera and we'll turn it on and we'll go through some of the functionality of this thing. And then we'll go for a walk and take it out and some practical applications. Right, so I've set it up using this little suction pad uh, so I can put my hand underneath it so we can see what's going on. Uh, first thing we need to do is on the top, uh, the red button, the power button, we'll press and hold that for two seconds to start it up. Uh, we'll give it a few seconds just to calibrate itself and get set up. Uh, but as you can see there, we're on now and it's all working. So if we look at these buttons down the left hand side, uh, we've got a little home button there, which will always return you back to this screen here. Uh, this is the live view screen, which we've got right now. I'll put my hand here so you can see what's going on. The next one down is the albums view. Uh, so if we press the photo button on the top, that'll save a photo. Uh, what we can do there is we can press the albums and then it'll go into the albums and you can see a few photos that you've taken there and saved. Also with the camera button on top, if you press it once, it takes a photo. Uh, if you press it and hold it, it starts a video recording. Uh, as you can see there, the timer's started at the top. It'll record a video, uh, press it again to stop the video. If we go into the albums view, there you can see the videos we've just saved. Uh, we can press play and then that'll record back any video that we've saved. 
Uh, the last one down at the bottom is the settings menu. Uh, we'll have a look through that in a minute. If I put my hand in front of this camera, uh, what you will notice is there's three reference points. Now what that's showing you is we've got a center temperature, a maximum temperature, which is whatever is the maximum temperature for what's on the screen at that particular moment in time, and a minimum temperature, which is also the minimum. You can see there it's between my fingers and down here, the hottest point is my skin between my fingers as well. What you can do there is if we press this one at the top, uh, you can turn those on and off. So the maximum temperature we can turn off, the min minimum temperature we can turn off, we can just have the center point, or you can turn the center point off, just have the maximum temperature, and pick which one you want to have. Um, I'll leave it on all three, so we've got all three temperatures showing at any one time. Uh, the next one down is your image modes. Uh, what this will do is currently we're on just the thermal image. Um, if I press that, you've got at the top the thermal image. Uh, the one in the middle is a mixed image between the two cameras on the back, which will show the thermal image and a cross of the camera as well. It, uh, it's a bit close to my hand at the minute, but when you're looking through it normally, um, it overlays it a lot better than what it is now. We'll have a look later when we have a look at a practical, a practical example later. The bottom one is literally just the camera on its own, as you can see there. As you can probably see as well, what's happening every few seconds is a little click from the camera and it says calibrating at the top because what it does is it recalibrates itself to the minimum and maximum temperatures for the best view. Uh, the next one down is the color palettes. You can change the color palettes to best match the situation that you're trying to use the camera for. We've got quite a few to go through as well, look. So if I put that back to what it was, uh, the one at the bottom, uh, that's to set the temperature range. Uh, they call it level and span. Uh, we've got an automatic there. So what it'll do is it'll adjust these colors depending on the range of temperatures that's on the screen between the minimum and the maximum. What it'll do is it sets the minimum to like a really dark color and it sets the maximum to a light color. So what we can do is if we click on this manual, but if I click on an area of interest, say my finger, what it'll do is it'll highlight that particular thing and everything else will be quite dark. Uh, so when you're looking specifically at an area of interest, it will highlight that for yourself so you can see it quite easily. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at that when we're out looking at things a bit further than way than my fingers on this desk. Back in the live view, uh, we've got a digital zoom that we, if we just tap anywhere, uh, this will bring this one times up. So if I click on that, uh, we can click anywhere and we can digitally zoom it in on any particular thing of interest up to uh, 2.2 times zoom. If I go back out, we'll zoom that back to one times and you can see the difference there. Uh, so that could be quite useful when, to, when you're wanting to focus on something quite specific. Right, one thing you can do is if you go onto the Hick Micro website, uh, you can download some software for your PC for this thing. Uh, and you can use that to analyze your photos. Uh, one thing you can do with it is if we swipe down on the screen, uh, you can see there it's got a little screen cast. So what you can do is via USB, uh, you can cast your screen uh, to your computer and view everything through there as well. Also connecting via USB to your PC, um, it'll come up as a drive and you can, you can view the photos and videos that you've saved on here as well. Uh, you can load those into the software if you want or you can just view them normally. Uh, also on this screen, uh, you've got a little torch button there to turn the light on and off, uh, night mode and a day mode. Uh, so you can change your contrast depending on what you want it to be. And down here, we've got a little brightness up and down that we can adjust to your preference. It also tells you there your storage. Uh, there's built-in storage into this. There's no SD card slot. Uh, there's no SD card slot. The storage is built in. You've got 2.3 gigabyte of storage in this, which is plenty enough memory for 30,000 images or 20 hours of MP4 video footage. So if I swipe up to get back out of this, what we can do is we can have a quick look through the settings menu now. So if I click on the settings at the top, we've got our measurement settings. Uh, this shows our temperature ranges. Currently it's set to minus 20 degrees Celsius to 150 degrees Celsius. You can click on that. Uh, you can change this, narrow it down a little bit more. 
The next couple of settings or so you can tune it in a little bit better to whatever you're uh, using it for. You see you've got human skin, PCB, concrete, uh, so you can you can set that so it'll be a little bit more accurate reading depending on what you're what you're looking at. Uh, the distance setting this is for a parallax correction uh, when you're using the mixed image of the camera and the thermal image uh, what you do is if you set that distance correctly then the two images will be a bit more accurate over each other uh, so they'll match a little bit better when you're when you're viewing those. Down at the bottom we've got some alarm settings uh, I've got an alarm turned on here look so anything over 55 degrees C you can set that at whatever you want uh, it'll do an alarm if we click on the alarm linkage uh, what we can do is we can have it as a flashing alarm which will flash the light on the front when it's over 55 degrees as it is now it'll just tell me there's an alarm so if i come back out that one uh, connections this is again for that software that i mentioned you've got usb cast screen you can turn that on uh, display settings you can turn on and off what information you want to display on your photos that you're saving time date perimeters brand logo uh, capture settings uh, what you can do is if we go into capture mode you've got capture one image which is press the button to capture or you can have a scheduled capture or a continuous capture uh, so depending on what you're doing and how you're using this so if you've got it set up on a mount like this one is uh, you can have a scheduled capture so then you can schedule it to capture at intervals at whatever you want it to set at. So if you're looking at something over a time period, you can set it up to do that. Uh, this is just a file name header. A uh, save visual image, you can set it by default so it'll save uh, a photo from the camera as well as taking the thermal image photo. So you'll have two separate images uh, for whatever you're taking the image of. So you'll have the thermal image image and the normal camera image as well so you can overlay them if you wish or just have them side by side on your report a uh, super ir uh, this is an upscale for your thermal camera the thermal image camera resolution by default is 96 by 96 pixels uh, what that this super ir does is this upscales it to 240 by 240 pixels so you get a lot clearer image by the upscaling we come back out uh, device settings at the bottom uh, screen brightness which you can also get to by swiping down which we looked at uh, unit i'm in the uk so temperature i've got on celsius you've also got fahrenheit or kelvin uh, distance you've got meters and feet i'll put it in meters uh, language english time date auto power off uh, so you can set a time so it automatically powers off i'll set it 10 minutes device initialization what you can do is you can use this to set this back to any defaults and device information this just gives us firmware and all that sort of stuff uh, to upgrade the firmware on this thing if there is an upgrade available you can download it from the website connect this to your usb and copy over the firmware to the root folder of this device and then when you start the device it will update the firmware uh, what we need to do now is I need to take this and this camera, let's go for a walk around and let's just see what it looks like in some practical situations and see how it performs. Right, so I've got the camera, so let's have a look around at some practical applications of what we can do with it. Uh, this particular factory's got underfloor heating, uh, so as you can see, you can check to see if the heating is working in the areas where it's supposed to be. And here as well on this heating pump installation, you can see there the one that's supposed to be running is running and the heat is transferring how it's supposed to be. Same again there with this boiler installation. Uh, you can see that the circulation pump's pumping and doing what it's supposed to be doing. If we have a look at this heat exchanger as well, uh, what we'll see there is the furthest two pipes are from the boiler and the closest two pipes are for the circulation pumps. Uh, there's not a lot being circulated around because there's literally only this one pump pumping but there we can see if the heat exchanger is working and doing what it's supposed to be doing normally if this belt was running uh, you could use this camera to check the gearbox just to make sure that all the bearings are all right because they'll be creating heat if they're starting to get a bit worn out uh, what we can see is that pump down there has got a bit of heat to it um, it's showing 56 degrees uh, so to me that looks like it's trying to run but it's seized up so we need to get somebody to have a look at that the obvious one is for electrical installations ideally you should have all these covers off so you can see the cables and everything uh, but what you can do is you can use the camera to check over the mcbs just to make sure none are overloaded and showing any hot spots uh, what we can do is if we see any areas of interest uh, it's a bit hard to do with one hand 
if we press the temperature button, if I press that manual, uh, then if I just press with my finger that area of interest down there, uh, then that'll highlight specifically that area of interest there so we can see it properly and in more detail. Right, so there we have it. There's a few uses that we can use for this camera. Uh, one thing I am liking is how thin it is and it fits straight in your pocket. And it also feels quite sturdy as well from the rubber coated outing as well. So I feel like if I drop it, it's not gonna break straight away. So in that respect, it's, it feels quite good. So from what I've seen so far, this is a definite yes from me. Uh, the price is really good as well when you compare it to the real high-end sort of things that are really expensive. This is doing exactly what you need it to do and it's doing it for a price that you feel comfortable paying. I thought I'd show you guys in a practical application as well, just so when I'm doing these sort of videos, you know that I do actually use these things on a day-by-day -day basis. So I can give a decent opinion about what these things can do and if they're gonna be useful to somebody in this sort of situation. Uh, so as I've said, I'll put links below where you can check this out, uh, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more, uh, I know it's a bit random between the things that I do, and I will catch you in another video later. Cheers.